Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network and prepare to be educated about the unknown. Hello, everyone. Adam, the Historian Ghost Hunter here for another great episode of the Historically Haunted Show. Um, I got a great guest this week, someone who's who a lot of people know in the field. I like him personally because I like his attitude. He's very open, very honest. He's, he tells you how he feels, and if you don't like it, you can go take a hike. And I like that because um, he, he can back it up with his knowledge and, and what he's got. A lot of you know him as the ghost guy. Ghost, yeah. G-H-O-S-T-G-U-Y, the ghost guy. My, uh, my guest today, Jason Alexandra. Uh, Alexander, um, Jason, what is up, my brother? How are you? I'm pretty good. Just got done with supper. Got the the kids over at my my sister in law's house with the wife, and I'm just I'm ready to go. It's my Friday. Awesome. I'm off work now. Uh, I was gonna say we talked pre show, and he just got done mowing on a Reuben, the sandwich. Not a guy, like he said, which is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but he's got some plans tonight. Go hang out with some some uh, some friends, some some guys and girls, and hang out. But maybe have a fire, shoot shoot the shit, have a drink. But he's gonna join us for an hour. And we're gonna talk some ghosts and stuff with all you fine people in chat. Jason's in there as chat too. He's the ghost guy. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Melissa Keen. Uh, weekly uh, check in with her. George Cannon, Witch and uh, Heather, Witch and Nature, Betsy, Mike chat Davis, Terry York, guy. UFO Fred's joining us in chat. Fred uh, uh, Richards and of course King. So let's talk about the Bartersville say- Ghost uh, Research Team. You're the founder, director, CEO, uh, investigator, yeah. All right. everything I'm, there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I founded it back, uh, uh, I'm going to say 2010, 2011, as Bartlesville Paranormal Investigators. And I uh, I ran it good for a couple of years, uh, and I gave it up because I was having kids, and I, I just felt like I didn't have time. So I was like, I'll give it up. So I gave it to some people. I ended up back with the the group just about one and a half years ago uh and uh i decided i was going to change it up because i I found i'm not as big in paranormal as as people are i I like ghosts ghosts is what interests me and so that's what i want to study so i was like well i'll just change the name so i changed it to what it is now ghost ghost research bartlesville ghost research team okay so what we're going to do is basically all these things that everybody else is scared of, scared to try, scared to talk about, scared to even be around. I'm going to test the hell out of it. And we're going to prove either one way or another. <laughs> it killed yeah. me. It, it's bad. It, it, I'm still alive. Well, we, we get evidence from it maybe, but you know, it's, it's I like that. Yeah. That's hard so, to go for. You're full, you're full tilt into it. That's, I mean, you, you, some chases you are risking your fucking life and that you're, you're full tilt brother. You live it. Right. I mean, Wow. Yeah. Bartersville, for those of you who don't know, um, it's a town that he's around in Oklahoma, uh, the state of Oklahoma. Yep. Um, Bartersville is the town. That's why it's that. So yeah. in case you don't, uh, folks don't know. Yeah, I was going to try just ghost research team. But then I was like, well, my my biggest focus is around here. For one, I, I, can, I can get more people if I put the, the name of the city I'm in. I can get more people that mm-hmm. want to participate in it. And, and it's, it's worked out for me. So absolutely especially in oklahoma there's a lot of a lot of history there uh, we got a question right off the bat from my boss there the king ross himself who, who said hello to you pre-show he'd like to know where the term or where your name ghost guy came from but i think you kind of just said that so to speak mm, maybe no uh, I, I literally had ran bartlesville paranormal for uh, you know two or three years and everybody just when they referred to me when they saw me out hey ghost guy hey ghost guy and so I just said, I'll just, I'll, I'll make a page. I'll, I'll be, I'll be the ghost guy because 
that's what everybody calls that's me anyway. Funny. So I was say a lot of people say that when they see a ghost hunter, they go, "Oh, ghost guy, ghost guy," but you took it, and <laughs> I love it because it's catchy. It's it's you can easily obviously remember it, spell it, and it's it's a hit. You got a lot of followers. Yeah. Um. You also, uh, I see you got a TikTok. Is that that must be related to this? I'd imagine. Yeah, kind of. You know, with the COVID and everything, we've been staying kind of away from people. Um. And so I've mostly turned my TikTok into game clips, like video game clips. I play a lot of Call of Duty. Oh, and stuff. Yep. So that's, that's cool. on there. It's, it's just right now there's not much to post. I, I did do an investigation two weeks ago, got through all the evidence, found nothing. It was just a, uh, a dead night <laughs> pun. Yep. But, uh, yeah. It, it just, just like fishing. You can't catch one every time, brother. You yeah, can't catch you one every can. time. And so People I, are I, so impatient. They want to catch something every night. They go, oh, this is a ghost hunt. You know, the the, the weekend warriors and shit. They want reactions oh. right away. It's like, nah. Oh, As you know, you put a lot of hours into this, man. You know that. Oh, yeah. I put tons of it and put tons of money into it. And and I've actually slimmed down my my equipment just to, to the basics, stuff that I should have I should have kept on. You know, when I started, what I have have now is not any better than what I started with. And it's just because... You, you know, you, you buy something geared towards ghost hunting, you're going to get results because that's what it's, that's what it's being sold for. That's why they want you to buy it. And that's what will right. keep you buying it. It's because it gives you results. But a lot of people don't understand EMF. They don't understand uh, static electricity. There's a lot of stuff people don't understand. So if, if they're using these equi- this equipment around other equipment, you're going to get positives. People just, just leech to that. I don't yeah. want to be showing false positives. I want, I want actual solid proof. So yeah, with my research team, we're going to try to adhere as close as we can to the scientific method and, and test it and show people and get, get a, a, a peer review on it. And, you know, maybe one of these days publish something. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I like that answer because you get your your average person ghost hunting and they get the, the fucking thing and they go, oh, it said this or oh, there's a stick figure dancing. And they kind of just leave it at that and they take a picture and then they move on. But you you really like you say you diagnose this stuff. You get you go deep and you want to find the root of it. And, and I think it's if that's the difference between I don't know, man. I, I like that shit because that's how I am a researcher, too. Um, Witch in Nature, Betsy Williams, who rolls with the searchers. She's a good friend of the shows and ours. Uh, she asked you. uh how far have you gone as far as trying to experience ghosts? I would say, I mean, the furthest I've gone because we were we're a local we we're we're a local ghost hunting team. The furthest I've gone just for a, a what we considered a fun hunt was in Arkansas. There's an old tuberculosis hospital there that is Ooh. is fairly cheap to get into, and and uh, you get it from five o'clock that evening till five o'clock the next morning, and you clean up and get out of there. Um, wow. that's the furthest I've been. It's a five story building with a basement and, and we've had, we've, we've had pretty good luck with it. We're going to try to get back into it sometime this year, um, with another group that I hang out with here in Bartlesville called geeks. So, Ooh. Hey, just <laughs> let you know, I may take a road trip out that way this year too. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to meet you. Wink, 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 wink. I'd love to go. <laughs> with a, <laughs> that sounds right up my alley. I'd love to meet you too, man. I mean, we've been following each other's shit for a while. And and you're very supportive of a lot of people and and um it, but you're also I love how you 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 got your opinion on things and you're just pretty much like hey here it is and uh, that's bold and and I think in this field too it's it's kind of bold almost harsh but I think it's needed with a lot of sugar coated shit and what people want to hear and I think yeah. you're refreshing in that sense and that's I, a compliment. You know? I used to be I used to be considered the the asshole of the paranormal world I I would. I would get on people's posts if I could see that it was it was bullshit. I would call bullshit, and I I I, I ruined a lot of uh, uh, friendships with that. I I did burn a lot of bridges. I've toned myself down. I'm 41 years old now. I I need to calm down and have as many friends as I can, so I'd have a big funeral. But my thing is, is <laughs> I, I yeah. still will call out the bullshit, but I won't do it publicly on their posts. I won't I won't try to tear them down. I I'll send them a message. This is what I thought. People still get mad about it, but they oh, have yeah. to respect the fact that I, I I didn't try to blast it out there. If they want to continue to say that it's real and it's fake, that's on their conscience. But I, I just try to try to make sure that people give to, to look at every angle of what they're trying to present. And well, wouldn't you want an esteemed colleagues, so to speak, like, you know what I mean? Obviously, you don't know them, but wouldn't you, you're in the field. Wouldn't you want your their opinion? Wouldn't you yeah. kind of like, thanks, man, I'll look at, but some people, they want to ride the coattails and say, fuck you, you know, I, I yeah. get it. 
No, yeah. they just you know it's like you got a lot of a lot of people like to to chase the the famous people the the guys on TV which a lot of those guys are just normal guys that are uh, nice guys but it's like they want to ride the coattails of you know hey I I got to hang out with this group I got to do this I got to do that and I'm like that's cool but did that did you produce any evidence did you have any did you have anything yeah. come out of this or yeah. Is it just to have fun? I, I don't mind having fun. I'm a fun guy. No, but. <laughs> these, like these Paracons and shit. These Paracons are great. Yeah. But after a while, it's like, you know, if you end up going to all of them, you'd be a millionaire. And a lot of them, you just kind of shoot the shit and drink and hobnob, which is cool. But I get in this to, you, man, I get in this to chase ghosts and look for answers and try to find mm-hmm. uh, cemetery walkers at night. I mean, hobnobbing and, and shit's cool, too. I'm not trying to knock mm-hmm. it. It's just not really my thing, I guess. I don't mm-hmm. know. I like um, so Betsy Brown, uh, she, Williams there, uh, which in nature, she's from, uh, Arkansas originally. She wants to know if, if you could spell the beans on where that, uh, asylum might be. Uh, I'm not supposed if to, not, but I can fun. tell you that it's well, in, what is that town's called? That town is called Boonesville. It's in okay. Boonesville, Arkansas. All right. My people. <laughs> People are already researching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's part of the name too, so I didn't tell oh, you where sure. it was, right but it, it oh, is no, there. Hey. <laughs> hey, it's just you, me, and a bunch of people, and it'll go on YouTube later, so yeah, no one's gonna they, hear it. I don't think um, they even uh, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which nature also asked? She goes, "Thank you, Jason." She also asked, "Oops, chat got pushed down." Uh, how? Uh, what kind of places do you like to hunt? Uh, ghosts? Is, is it basically like a, a sanatoriums or cemeteries or just houses, whatever? <laughs> I I used to love to do homes, but I don't like I don't like people as much as I used to. Um, Amen. You, you go and investigate, and they want to know right then, like, did you see anything? Did you catch anything? And a long time ago, I learned that you don't just tell people right off the bat, no, this happened, this happened, this happened, because if you don't have the evidence to back it up, you 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 they, they could think you're lying. It, it would come out as yeah. false. You just, you can't do that. So you, no. they, they would be rushing you through evidence. I was so stressed out. It was like my second job. So homes are out now. I don't do any homes unless it's a friend of mine. And uh, we set that up and they understand, give me a month to go through stuff. Cause I got other stuff going. So yeah. hospitals and nursing homes are my, are my main things I would want to get into. Uh, I, I feel like a place where more death happened would be the best case scenario to catch, to actually catch something. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is, is that I used to be scared of the dark. I was scared of the dark until I was in my early twenties. Um, it was so bad. My first wife literally had to walk me to the bathroom. If I woke up in the middle of the night after we watched wow. the movie, it was bad. Oh shit. And, uh, yeah. I had That's my serious first thing, yeah. I had my first paranormal experience with my with my first wife and it, it was it was in a house that we bought. We we joked that somebody got killed there because when we got there it looked like blood all over the walls. Like I don't know if it's paint or what. Nobody told us. We were just two young kids moved into this house and painted it and had our first kid and we started having a uh, a lot of activity around our kid. Like uh, we had one of those pull toys that you, you hang on the doorknob and you pull the string and it plays music. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. My, my niece had one. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was in there. We were in bed. It was like two or three in the morning. And my wife at the time was knocking on my arm saying, hey, do you hear that? And I hear in it. I hear it playing a song. So I, I'm like, are you going to go check? And she's like, we, we can go check. So as soon as we got past our little threshold in our out of our room, the music stopped. And we go in there, wow. like, laying in bed, uh, everything's like it was, but things not even moving. Okay. So I pull it a little bit just to make sure. And it does this little song and it goes all the way back up. We go back to bed a little bit later. She's waking me up again and I hear it playing again. So we went in there and, and, uh, looked again and it stopped as soon as we went past our door frame and, our kid was still asleep, asleep and I, I tell you what, I've never been more scared in my life. That was the scaredest oh, I've ever been. So, yeah, when me yeah. and her split, I had to live with a buddy of mine, and uh, his uh, he was living in his ha- in a house where his grandma had died. And uh, one night, I was 
I was just laying there trying to go to bed. I felt something pulling the covers off of me. And that instant, I wasn't scared. I was just irritated. And I said, you know, if you're not here to do something, just leave me alone. And it stopped. And I was like, you know what? That wasn't so bad. This, this, this dark isn't so bad. I, I, I don't feel like anything was here to hurt me. So maybe I could do this. And it took a while, but I built up a really, really good, uh, immunity to, to fear. I still fear things. I still wonder, but I don't know if, if, if you knew, but I, I'm atheist. I actually, I don't, uh, I don't practice religions. I don't, I don't believe in the religions. It's atheism though. Isn't a, I hate religion kind of thing. Atheism is I want to find the truth. And people always ask, well, why do you want to be, why do you want to ghost hunt if you, if you're an atheist? Well, because I want to know my, my whole journey in this field is to determine, is there life after death? Is there somebody there that I should seek? Is it, is it real? And that's the biggest thing in this whole thing. Cause I almost died <laughs> two years ago from a wow, pulmonary. Really? Uh, so I, uh, I basically, I went through the, they called it the widow maker. I went through that and it's, it's just put me on a, on a, on a more focused journey on what I want to do. That's why I don't want to ghost hunt per se anymore. I want to test things. I want to try to make something happen. I want to try to talk to something. I want that contact because you only get so much time to be able to figure that out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I, you know, it's funny, I, that kind of smashes a lot of the, of the barriers, I got to admit, I'm actually, I'm kind of learning some stuff, because I am actually, I don't know, because I was born and raised Catholic, now I'm kind of just a spiritualist, so to speak, kind of recovering Catholic, as I call it, because I don't believe in the whole fear God thing, but um, I, I, have, I myself have had experiences, but to hear someone who's atheist, who I think wouldn't, th that's the perfect person to see a ghost, because if you don't really feel like you're not sure about religion or God and stuff, if you happen to see one, it seems to me like you're not a skeptic, you're a realist, and you're really trying to find that thing that lets me, you know, shit, there really is ghosts, right? And the, I thing, mean, the thing that would be better is to actually be able to, because with being an atheist, I don't have the, the worry of there's a demon that's trying to get me, or right. something like that. I'm, I'm looking at whatever's out there, because I've seen things, but I'm looking at whatever's out there as being just like what me and you are now, that's who yeah. it needs to be. And if I can, if I can talk to them, then, then maybe we can figure out what the difference is in between life and death. What, what are the differences? What, what do you see? That's refreshing. You're in it for not TV and fame and bullshit <laughs> likes and stuff. You're in it for your own personal. It sounds, it sounds, um, selfish but not really you're in it for your own personal knowledge you want to know and that, that's what i'm in it for too i mean helping people's fine and dandy but like you say house cases man half the time they're either up your ass or they want to know results and you don't know what to tell them but just to learn excuse me on your own uh for those of you just tuning in jason alexander and we uh, we got another question from uh, my girl heather kimonidi she's uh she's tuning into some of your stuff now witching um she's got a question have you ever seen a full-bodied apparition we, we, me and a, me and my old group, we actually did, we had a test house uh, that we would use for uh, just practice investigations or help train new investigators because it was a house. Uh, somebody had died in it. It was on Cherokee land. Uh, wow. I mean, you could even find uh, uh, those uh, arrowheads out in the, out in the yard. It was just, it was an old place. And uh, one night me and uh, one of my, my uh, partners, he was uh, helping me set up my camera and I was trying to point it down this hallway at this room. And uh, next thing we know, we see it looked like a shadow peeking out the door and it kept coming out a little further. And I'm like, do you see that? And he said, yeah, he said move or something. He's moving. He's, it's not a shadow of us. So it zooms back in. We run down there to look at it and it, there was nothing in that room. Nobody was in that room. And we went to everybody else. We're like, where's everybody? Nobody was on that side of the house. There wasn't a light shining in that window. It was just a, a real, it was a shadow figure. I mean, to me, that's an apparition, <laughs> but absolutely, yeah. it was, it was there and it was solid and it, it was, it was fantastic except for 
I was setting up my camera and I didn't have the uh, camera on yet. So, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So I can tell you it was, it happened, but <laughs> yeah. you never know if it did or not, but I can tell you it happened. It was, it was well, there. You live the, the experience. You live the experience, you know, when your head, it's real, but to have oh, yeah. that always is a little extra, but still dude, that's magnificent. Wow. What a story. Um, before I lose track real quick in chat, we have some questions coming in. i um, Melissa Keen, long time listener since the beginning, really. She uh, asks, uh, do you believe in, uh, in a E E V I'm sorry, let me start over. Do you believe in EVP is a voice of spirit? Um, I believe it. it's something. It, it, basically, the 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 phenomenon itself is a is it, it's we assume that spirits can talk over uh, electronic uh, devices. So we assume that the things we hear are ghosts or EVPs, um, but. The other thing we got to think of, too, is there's certain recorders, which I got me a Zoom H something, I don't know, H4N or something, which is one of the higher dollar recorders uh, to kind of combat this. But if you have one, like I had an old Panasonic, you move it on your clothes while you're walking somewhere and it sounds like a voice happened. So not every not everything that somebody catches is what I consider an EVP. I mean, a lot of it is contamination. A lot of it's noise, but I mean, it's hard to say whether, whether I believe in it or not. Cause it's, it's not, it's one not been proven a hundred percent that this is ghosts coming through, but there is some pretty crazy evidence pointing towards that. It is actual spirit voices coming through a recorder. Um, I, I I agree. I've tried testing it out. My mom, she passed away about two years ago. Uh, wow, and I have her urn. Well, yeah, I haven't. She she would help me out though. She told me she said if I die, I'll help you out. So I've got her sitting on my nightstand in my bedroom, and uh, I've actually tried to do a, a Ouija board session with her with her ashes there. Tried to get some kind of a communication going with her. And I had so much, so many people hate me on that because, you know, Ouija boards, it'll, it'll come through. It'll make you think it's your mom. Like, no, probably not. <laughs> you can, yeah. you know, if you know me, right. you know, I don't believe that, but no, I, no. I was wanting to try to get my mom to actually talk to me. And my problem is right now is why is it the one person I want to contact me? that's the person that's not going to contact me. And I know my mom would because I know my mom supported me in this, even though she didn't like it, she supported me in this. So I can't seem to get her voice recorded on my, my little equipment here, but I can get, and I have gotten other voices in my house. <laughs> Ooh, wow. When well, you're in that, currently right now, yeah, well, yeah. The house we're in currently is actually a. Uh, it was a, a house a, a man had died in, uh, way before we moved in. But our neighbors was uh, had come over one day and said, "So you do that ghost hunting stuff?" I said, "Yeah." She goes, "Well, you have the perfect house. A guy died in oh. one of those rooms in that house." Oh, dude. And I was like, cool. And we've it's seen, we've much. seen a shadow figure down at the end of the hallway where our kids actually sleep. We've seen one. Um, we've heard uh, what sounds like little kid talking, and we thought it was our kids. It wasn't. <laughs> we've heard it when wow. they were one. <laughs> but it's like, it's faint stuff. It's stuff that me and my wife both hear at the same time, though. And it's 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 a cool place, but my wife has basically demanded that I don't do any research here. <laughs> well, that's funny because... King just wrote, it's not good to investigate your own house is what he's been told. And that's yeah. funny because you can kind of bring it. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. But I mean, wow, what what a treat. I mean, I don't know. Holy cow. I mean, you, you they say not to investigate your own home. Biggest reason is because that'll make you feel uncomfortable. Like at that point, you know something's there. You're never going to be comfortable. If another group comes in and does it, you kind of have that. Eh, they might be lying to me kind of thing. But if you do it and you find evidence. And you know that you, what you were doing and what was going on. How are you going to sleep that night? 
but yeah, I don't have that pro. I don't feel like even if it's there, like I, I have to sleep in the living room right now. I'm by myself. The living room is where my oldest son has said he's seen shadows walking through our kitchen and living room area. And uh, I sleep there by myself at night. And I have a camera that I, I turn on motion detection at night while I'm sleeping just so I can catch if it's there. And if I caught it, it wouldn't make me feel any different to sleep there the next night. <laughs> wow you're at peace with it you you're strong enough and you know what's up and it hasn't hurt you and it's obviously not malicious so yeah. i mean right you can live and coexist yeah that's really, really cool that's really cool but i think people just take too much of what they see on tv as the way things are there's a lot that people see on tv where you got zach bagans going around being possessed every show you've got you know yeah yuck yeah, it's I just, know, dude. They give it a bad name because that's what everybody thinks. How many demons have you seen? I almost get that every show. How many demons have you seen? It's like, come on, dude. I mean, I, even Tony Sparrow said they're very, very few and far between. You'll get bad spirits, but not demons. Come on, guys. I mean, then then these other people that do these writing and they start shaking when they get possessed and shit on TV shows. Like, it's all entertainment. This is a fine line. You're a researcher. You're a scientist. You're an Egon Spengler. Yeah. These other people, they're they're Bill Murray's dude. I mean, I love Bill, but. <laughs> with some glamour you know oh yeah yeah and it's it's i did used to want to be i wanted to be on a tv show i wanted to be famous for this and it just uh after so long you just you realize that's not what you wanted you you want to be popular you want to be cool you want everybody to to look up to you for for the knowledge but it's like to think about it some of these people that are on shows have just as little knowledge as i do no, there's no experts i hate it when people no. claim to be experts and yeah. they always want to label anybody that's been on tv an expert and i realized i don't want to be considered an expert because they can say i'm an expert that doesn't mean i know jack shit about any of this no. stuff and i don't because i know you read a, because you read a script some hollywood guy wrote you you're an expert get the fuck out of here yeah. <laughs> i mean there's like there's like an iceberg and we've got an ice cube from Sonic. That's what we know out of this whole iceberg. We know just about yeah. as big as a little piece of Sonic ice. Mm, oh, I love Sonic. Don't get me started. I get the munchies. I just want the joints. I could go for a Sonic fucking slushy with nerds, bro. I tried when I, my first time I ate. Well, no, I'm sorry. I did. I did do a Sonic in Tennessee, um, but being from Maine, there's no Sonic, but there's one in Salem and Peabody, mm. and uh, when we go to Salem, Massachusetts, I which city a lot. See, when people go to the Hocus Pocus house and they go to little museums and little places to buy by the um, the lavender and this, I'm going to where the witches were hung on on uh, on the hill. I'm mm -hmm. going to the Rebecca Nurse Homestead in Danvers, where one of the witches lived, and she's been. I like the history part, and I can tell that you're into that too. Like you don't, you I don't see you as like a very glitz and glamour. Like you're like, yeah, I can see you off doing the the, the other cool shit, which oh, is yeah. cool. I mean, you got to think you could do it for so long. You can just go out and and just look at the sites and not ever get any any evidence, not get any, any get anything from it. And you're yep. you're going to burn yourself out. But if you actually get results from stuff you're doing, it, it'll just keep paying off. I mean, you'll you'll want to dive deeper into it. I mean, like I said, I've seen I've seen things. I've heard things. And it just makes me want to dive deeper into the whole research side of it. I want to, I want to, I want to cause something to happen. I told, I, I was, I've been trying to advertise on my page that I want a building that somebody will let me use. The only stipulation is, is that it may be haunted by the time I leave because I have, I have so many people that want to know if you can create your own haunting. They want to know how you can do it. And, you know, basically, is it possible for somebody to be scared enough to cause a haunting? So, like, it wasn't there before, but it is because you were so scared that it was there. It happened. That's yeah. one big thing that people want to know because their kids, their kids are so scared. Could their kids be causing their own uh, things that they say happen? I mean... My kids knew nothing about what I did. They didn't know ghost hunting and stuff. They were uh, three and four. And uh, we lived in a house that we didn't know the history of it, but we figured it was haunted. My kids that did not know I ghost hunted, know nothing about it, never watched any ghost hunting shows, came down to us and told us there was some lady hanging in the window and she was bleeding from her feet. Oh, boy. 
Yeah, and we were like, what? And they told us, and we had them take us upstairs. This is the middle of the day. I mean, they take that's us upstairs. The Disney, that's not on the yeah. Disney Network. Kids aren't yeah. watching that. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, and you don't wow. want to watch. You don't want your kids to watch stuff like that because no, that, they, they, no. they will get scared. That's but, real life. They yeah. saw something. So it was in the yeah. middle of the day. We go up there. We look. There was nothing there. They showed us where it was hanging. Um, at that point, my office was upstairs, so I just put some cameras up upstairs just to watch that whole area i never caught anything but it was just the fact that that night my kids did not want to sleep in their room their room was upstairs they didn't want to be in there they just they ended up sleeping in our room all the time it was just oh we didn't have our own spot anymore but i don't know if they ever slept up there again honestly about it but That's, it was yeah. People in China saying poor kiddos. It sucks being a kid. At least an adult, you can kind of decipher. But as a kid, that's fucking horrifying, dude. You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, which and, actually it brings me to my next question by Betsy Williams. Great question tonight, Betsy. She asks if literally this is her question: Has any ghost ever scared the shit out of you? <laughs> out of me, um, I will say my first uh, my first experience was when I was a kid, like everybody else. Um, I had been, I had gone in the house to go to the bathroom. Everybody else, my whole family, my aunts, uncles, grandparents, everybody was out front. I was the only one in the house. I go in, go pee, and I open the door, and there's a person standing there with this mask that my dad has that uh, it scared the crap out of me all the time. Um, but it wasn't him wearing it. This this was a tall figure wearing this mask so i fall back into the wall and i start screaming and it runs back to his room well you hear the front door open and my my dad my mom everybody they're coming in they're like what's wrong and i'm like hysterical and i i said somebody's got your mask on and i probably was i was probably six years old um so somebody's got your your mask on they went in your room and he goes in there and he's looking he says there's nobody in here and he took me, took me in there. There was nobody else in that room. He showed me where his mask was. It was un, in a filing cabinet buried under stuff. He's like, what did you see? And I said, that. I saw that on a person, a tall person standing in front of the wow. door. Wow. And crooked man. It was, it was crazy. We, me and my brother were grounded a lot. We would, uh, our bedroom was at one side of the hallway and my parents hall uh, bedroom was on the other side of the hallway. So we could look directly from our door to my parents' room, my parents' room. We would watch. It looked like a, a something was coming out from under their bed. This house was crazy. This house was a little two bedroom home. That was crazy. When I was a kid, um, one night, me and my well, brother, we should, old, do you know the year? It, it wasn't that old. I think it was, I, it was, it was a, a 19, uh, 30s home that had been a little bit redone. It wasn't real old, but it was a very crazy activity house. Uh, me and my brother were wow. asleep one night. We slept in the same bed in the same room and we both got wo- woke up to what sounded like a witch cackle. And it was like, <laughs> anyway woke us up out of a dead sleep wow. we start screaming like everybody was my whole street was quiet like there was nobody outside my parents were in bed and we were we were started screaming like what in the world anyway they came and got us we slept in their room that night but <laughs> we ended up investigating that house a uh, few years after my my parents got divorced and uh they were getting ready to sell it and i asked if i could just go in there and we ended up catching a few voices in there. We caught a like a crazy sigh. Like you could hear all of us talking in the living room, but the recorder was in the kitchen. And you hear <sighs> right into our, our voice recorder. And I told my stepmom about it. And I said, uh, I said, I know you and you and dad didn't get along a whole lot and i know that a lot of times you you use the kitchen as your getaway i'm gonna play you something and i want you to tell me does this sound like you because it sounds like you to me and i played it for her and it freaked her out it was her own it was her own sigh it was her sigh and that's Holy why yeah that residual residual hauntings that was the very first time i had ever come in contact with 
what I would consider residual that I could I could literally prove where it came from. So you can create your own stuff. It's just what can you create? <laughs> what what yeah. do you have the power to create? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, wow, um, great conversation. We're talking again um, with the ghost guy. Um, we got some more questions. I keep let's see. Um, keep them coming, guys. If I skip them, just ask them again. Uh, Which in nature, Bessie asked, do you research people? Um, most of all, uh, the land um, usually is is uh, will be like natural, uh, like Native American land. And do you pay respects because she does, which I'm sure you do. Yeah, I mean, we I try not to do uh, a whole lot of. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm never disrespectful. I never. I never would. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, you would be. Do what? Like you, you, you seem like the type oh, of person that, that takes pleasure in where you go, and you don't take yeah. stuff for granted. You know, like a Zach Baggins going, "Come out, I'm here. No. What do you got? Do you we, bullshit." Like we only provoke. You know? We only provoke, and like, like our our uh, our test house that was on Indian land. We only provoked out there. We literally had a uh, well. My wife's Cherokee. The the one of the guys that was on the team, he was Cherokee. They they did always do their. Uh, their little thanks out there to uh, basically let them know we're, we're, we're respecting you um, and, and, you know, forgive us for anything. If we, if we did, if we did cause any problems, but yeah, it was a, cool. it was a good place to test, test stuff out that I won't provoke in somebody's house. And honestly, I've turned down so many investigations to people's homes uh, in the last couple of years, uh, just for the fact of, if I come in a home, yeah, come in a home. Anyway, if I go in somebody's home and I do an investigation that night, they're probably not going to get any sleep. And th- and I want other groups to hear this. <laughs> you go in and you do an investigation, you're going to ramp up the energy, no matter if you're provoking, if you're being uh, really quiet and meek, that energy in that house is going to be a lot higher. And honestly, the best way to ghost hunt is to have them set up their own cameras, them enjoy their own life, and then send you the footage and you go through it. I know that a lot of it is the thrill of going in and and having something happen, but to protect people <laughs> and their sanity. Yeah. Instruct You're them on how to do it. Right. <laughs> You're at nine times out of ten. I'm sorry, but the people do more harm than good. Oh yeah. Yeah, they either provoke the spirit or they scare the shit out of the people. Go, oh, it's definitely haunted. We got to come back and try to milk them. I knew about a team in New Hampshire. I'm not going to name names, but I heard that they would tell people, let's let you know, um, we're coming tonight and we enjoy uh, Pizza Hut pizza and soda. And they'd go and people would buy them. The people would fucking be scared shitless and buy this team pizza and soda. <laughs> and fucking, I, I heard about this from, I wasn't in the group, but my, my, my old friend was, long story short, and I guess they would just milk people. And that gives people like us a bad name as oh, yeah. artists, right? Yep. And I, I just, I, I don't understand how, I mean, I understand, I guess, why some people are just so okay with the wool being pulled over their eyes. I get it. Naive, it's just, kind of, yeah. Yeah, you have to have, you have to be a little bit skeptical to be able to, to just go, you know... <laughs> You're giving me some bullshit. I want yeah. real proof. If you can't give me real proof, and, and I'll be here. I'll be here during the investigation. That, and that's a lot of things ghost hunters don't like, and I don't like it either. But it, it, no, for me, not, my re- my reasoning for not having having the homeowner with us while there's an investigation is because contamination. We've mm-hmm. actually I was in contact with a group that had gone out to this. Uh, it was a called the 101 Ranch here in uh, Oklahoma and they went out there and it was supposed to be really haunted. They caught a lot of evidence, but found out that the, the place had set up uh, triggered recordings that would go off and, and make noise to uh, make you think you caught something. And so I don't, I don't like to have people there because I do you ever watch the ghost hunters uh, when they were doing that, uh, it was a ship or it was a submarine. I can't remember, but they saw a sheet being pulled off a of bed or a blanket being pulled off a of bed. And they ended up finding out it was one of the people that worked there. 
Oh, I'm really kidding. Yeah, you. that stuff happens. And that's kind of when I decided I don't really want the homeowners in here. They can sit out front and wait for us, but I don't want them in here while we do this. And uh, no, but I went they, to one once and the guy goes, the guy goes, the light just, just fell up. The picture just fell off the wall and went down the hallway and I didn't throw it either. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. uh, I'll never forget that. I go, oh, yeah, okay. And that's why, like you say, I mean, I'm like, yep. I didn't throw it either. And I'm like, that's why, you I mean, I think a lot of people want to believe. And they think, like you say, the fucking show's tainted shit. Really? And Lorraine Warren, yeah, the Conjuring movies, but they didn't really have part in that. They didn't have the shows. I really feel like Ghost Hunters, which is great, but that really set us up for the weekend warrior fucking everybody's a ghost hunter with a that's, with a pair of box or whatever that's where fuck. i started that's the only reason i started this was oh shit watch, no kidding watching Whoops. those ghost hunter shows after the yeah. uh, before before my little incident where i actually became not scared of the dark but watching it all that time and then me living in my buddy's house and that happening that night and me being able to to have power to say you know stop that's what got me interested in all this. It was just at that point, I didn't have the capacity of, of not being scared, I guess. Right. And well, uh, you seem deeper though. You don't just seem like you're looking for ghosts like them. Or you, you seem like you, yeah, I want, you know, you're, you're like them, but you're way deeper. You go into the research hard, man. Yeah. I didn't used to be. And that's the thing that people got to understand. I was a Christian for 34 years of my life. Wow, I, uh, I was, on. I was a diehard. I, I was born into the church. I was I was a uh, uh, going to church every Sunday and every Wednesday kind of person. I, I was the kid in school that tried to get a prayer back in school. I was I was the pray at the flagpole kid. I was that kid. But I wow. always had a question. What? How could that happen or how could it actually be the case that there's somebody out there? you know, that, that knows everything about us, that controls everything about us. Like there's got to be more to this. And with those questions and with some of the research I did when I was about 34 years old, I came to the conclusion that I don't believe in it. I don't believe there's a higher power. I don't believe all this stuff, but <laughs> I'm going to continue to ghost hunt because if there's any way you can figure out if it's real, if the, the afterlife is real, is to actually talk to the afterlife. I love that you're on that. So I don't want to say side, but you, that's, you know what I mean? Obviously you're like, but you're open and you're pretty much like, come on, show me. If you're there, show me. I love that aspect. Cause you go respectfully and you go deep and you want to find answers. You want like me, my mom passed away. I wear her, her ashes around my neck. And that's the only one I can't seem to talk to yeah. like with you and your mom. And you try to look and it's like, okay, if there really is a God, if there really is a heaven, if my mom does move on, let's see her. Tell me that she's in a better place place and i will join her one day i want to know that too yeah. and i think that's great because you kind of think you might have opened up a lot of people's eyes as to atheism uh, and i say that right atheism a a atheism atheism yeah there we go uh, um i mean I honestly dude like i'm like i said i've been a satanic temple in, in salem the headquarters and i i'm open to all of it i like listening to all buddhism whatever all of it and i love your aspect um, this is definitely a killer. I, I know we have some more questions. I'm sorry, guys. Chat's lighting up. Um, I do get a question for you myself personally, if I can ask one, guys and ladies in chat. <laughs> um, Jason, do you believe uh, where do you stand? I don't hear a lot of you, but on aliens, UFOs, and such. I I believe that the, there are aliens. I believe that that we've caught images of UFOs. Like, by we, I mean the government or or even these freelance people. I do believe mm -hmm. that they're out there. I just, to me, to know something's out there isn't as interesting to try to catch it at that point. I know ghosts are out there, but I don't know what ghosts are. I, and granted, I don't know what the aliens are either, but I know that it would be more, there's more of a chance that I'll be able to find out about ghosts before i'll find out about ufos and aliens and all that fun stuff mm -hmm. and honestly the movie the fourth kind freaked me the fuck out so <laughs> dude yeah. <laughs> yeah for those of you who haven't watched that movie do not watch it alone yeah and that or that. even signs signs was a oh with a kidman nicole kidman right uh, that... no it was uh yeah. who was yeah it? Oh Dennis no! Um, or somebody. Yeah, Quaid. Yep, yep. Signs is uh, 
uh, even the original Alien series with uh, Sigourney is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Uh, Nicole joins us in chat. What's up, Nicole? Everybody in chat, thank you for hanging tough. Um, like I said, if you could, uh, okay, right, here's one. Let me see. Oh, I just had it. Every time someone chats, it reboots it, so it's hard. Yeah, to that's what I've been having a problem with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not just me. Um, and everybody's having fun in chat, which is great. You guys, I want you guys to have fun. Thank you so much for listening and sharing all week long. Which in nature, Betsy asks again. Um, oh, and I just lost it. <laughs> oh, do you believe that creating a haunting could create a poltergeist? Well, question, and that's, Betsy. and Betsy honestly, I think a lot of times people confuse poltergeist is being something different than ghost poltergeist is just the it's a regular ghost that has more energy to move things that has more energy to actually make something happen a poltergeist isn't any different than any other ghost out there it's, it's a just, mischievous ghost almost a it, mischievous she likes to throw yeah. fucking shit around you know it just has more energy and it it, it literally could probably uh, even make itself visible if it wanted to my thing is, is that people want to classify ghosts, demons, poltergeist, and residual. And I'm like, poltergeist is literally ghost. It's just, it's just a ghost that's doing something. It's a ghost. Well, that's, that's humans. They're gonna categorize everything: music, sports, everything's gonna be. Well, no, that's new metal. Well, that's Viking metal. Well, that's hardcore metal. It's everything's gonna be fucking, uh, you know. And I think there's a full spectrum of it. Like you say, there's way less demons than people think. Oh. Um, they're too busy running hell, honestly, <laughs> if there is such a thing, which isn't. Uh, I don't believe in such a thing. I mean, there is some hardcore shit, but um, let's see. We had some more things. Uh, oh, Jody Foster's in it, King says, in Signs. Is that right? I don't or remember. Shit, right, I maybe remember. Mel Gibson. Was. Oh, yeah, it was Mel Gibson. Was it, it was Mel? Gibson. Oh, man, he's yeah. been in a lot of classics. Um, people are talking about smoking bowls. King, yeah, King got weed, but didn't have any papers. Poor King, such problems. Go to fucking Israel right now, or not Israel, but um, all right, <laughs> we're having fun. We're talking um, to Jason Alexander for the ghost guy. Um, he's having some good time. He's, he's off to a party soon. Jason, I'm gonna go off subject because it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, what's your go to for uh, I said you, you hit a Ruben earlier. What, what's your go to for like? Is it pizza, ribs, big old burger? What, what do you like to do for a hearty meal after a hunt or something? Steak. <laughs> oh, a shit. A nice, like big 16-ounce ribeye. Oh, how do you like uh, it cooked? Let's hear uh, it. Medium. Medium. Oh, I can't boy. have it any other way. And I, I, do, I do about a pound and a half, so I say 16 ounces. It's actually a little bit more. So I usually do a pound and a half of steak when I buy a steak. I buy a pound and a half. I take it out there. I cook it to to medium, and I I eat it. <laughs> That's oh, what Lord. I like to do. That's not after a hunt. Usually after a hunt, I'm ready to go to bed because I'm a I'm an early riser. I go to work at seven in the morning, get off at three in the afternoon, so I don't oh, stay up wow. too much past midnight. But some of these ghost hunts keep you out till two. I've gone to a to a uh, what is that a uh, uh, not Waffle House is what is it? IHOP. I've gone to IHOP and oh, yeah. yep. eaten there, but uh, most of the time, yeah, my favorite food is is a ribeye steak, and that's been handed oh, down here's... to me from my grandparents before me. So we're big, well, very big cool. steak people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, my girl Heather, we got about fifteen minutes left or so. My girl Heather says, which in no, oh, excuse me. I, I'm having a beer right now. Uh, she asked, have you ever been to our neck of the woods? Have you ever been to New England or maybe out of the country at, at all? Canada, Mexico? No, we were we were in uh, New Jersey uh, about July of last year is about the furthest east I've ever gone. Um, that's just because my wife was from New Jersey. So we uh, we went out there to see some family. But I want to get up. I want to get up in Maine and Connecticut and, and all that, but the, the, you know, I'll hook you up. You know, yeah. I'll hook you up with some good shit. There's some killer stuff in Maine, uh, Massachusetts, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm a country boy. I grew up in Lisbon and I'm down and sleeping in a tent, having a fire and beer still one in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously not ghost hunting. I don't drink beers and smoke weed on the ghost hunt. No. Um, I, I keep that to just like right now I'm just chilling with, with my girl and, Five yeah. degree Maine for Christ's sake, freezing cold. <laughs> um, use it at 70 where you are, Oklahoma, of course. Yeah. Big shout out to down south. We had another question right underneath Heather's. I'm trying to get to it. Uh, uh oh, King, which in uh, King King Ross wants to know if you use or will use a ghost box. I we have, um, we we actually got a I hated the thing at first, but we were in a home where it was actually a very active house and uh. 
we turned the ghost box on and I sneezed and it literally answered back kazoo type. Um, I asked, you know, was it a man or a woman? And it said, boy, we uh, told my wife, hey, you need to say hi. You haven't said hi to these th- to these people yet. She goes, hi, and it Im- immediately says hi back. Wow. That night, it worked like it was supposed to. But every other night that I've ever used one, there's just so much contamination. We live in Oklahoma. We have all kinds of radio stations around our little area here. It's really hard to use it in town. Yeah, if you're outside of uh, outside of the big towns, you could probably make one work, but I would rip off the antenna. You, if it's really a ghost box and you're really picking up ghosts, you don't need that antenna. They'll, they'll be able to ma- manipulate those, uh, those tones or those tunes, whatever they're doing. They should be able to do that without sure. that antenna on there. So, yeah, if you want your, your SB7 spirit box to work, and you want to know for sure that it's something else coming through one rip the antenna off and maybe even wrap the damn thing in foil just so you know, it's not getting outside interference from a, a radio station because I, I, for one, I do know there's a lot of interference, but that night, and I have the video evidence that night, we cannot figure out how all that happened because the kazoo type happened over several different channels. Um, oh, and why would you say kazoo tight these days? It's like you you say bless you or something like that. Yeah, it said that's kazoo tight. That's, that's an unmistakable word. It's not high or by it. Kazoo tight's a real. It's like an ascendance. <laughs> and and this wow. house was this house was fucking with us. I asked how many of you got how many are of you are here. I can't even say it today. How many of you are here? And you had this female voice coming through going, "How many of us do you want?" Oh my god, dude! You get the scariest voices. You get kids and like mm. fucking female voices through your shit. That's wow. How many do you want? It, yeah. See, that's not that's knowledgeable. That's she's fucking with you. Mm-hmm. That's not just for visual shit. Uh, George Cannon, a faithful listener, he had a question a long time ago, and I, I'm sorry, George, I didn't get to you. He asked, "When well, this is a good question, you like this, Jay?" Uh, he asked, "What your favorite location that you've investigated or just been to to visit has been, and would you go back?" Mm, let's see. My favorite place where something actually moved, like something was actually thrown at me, is a home that I would love to go back to now that I have a little bit more knowledge. But the the lady either moved or turned off her Facebook. I I don't remember where it was. Uh, I can't find the messages anymore. That house was my favorite house because it was the one... We had caught an EVP. My wife and one of our other investigators were in the living room. We had a recorder setting up on this counter or on this mantle. And uh, my wife was there watching it the whole time. We get home and start going through it. And the EVP was the creepiest voice I ever heard in my life says, I'll pray for you. But it was all long and drawn out. And we went back and we showed the lady the evidence we caught. And she, it freaked her out. And I told her, yeah, this, this stuff's kind of freaky. But as we were leaving, I was standing, she had this uh, like uh, six foot long bar in her, in her kitchen, living room area. And uh, I was talking to her about possibly being able to get one of my, one of my guys to come out and bless the home. And uh, as I'm telling her about this, these coasters from the middle of this counter just start coming off uh, towards me. They just start scooting all the way across this thing and they land at my feet and she's like wow. you saw that right and i said yeah i said that <laughs> happened a lot she says this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time and nobody else sees and nobody else believes me you saw it there, it, there's no way that could have happened and i said wow. no there's really not a way i said it really didn't like me talking about trying to bless the house and uh yeah, like I said, shortly after we, I couldn't get a hold of her. I couldn't find her on Facebook anymore. I, I just couldn't get contact. She didn't want to mess with it. She had told us basically that night that she would probably end up moving. And uh, yeah, we just never got to go back. But I'm no curious shit. if it was on her or if it was on somebody in her family because her and her daughter and her grandkid all lived there. And, right. Right, did it follow them? Did it stay in the yeah. house? Yeah. But, but she never got back a hold of me, so I'm assuming that's, that... <laughs> that's eerie in itself, isn't it? Not knowing oh, yeah. whatever happened or will happen, it's kind of bizarre. 
It is. That's the problem sometimes with these home cases. You don't want to get too involved because you don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Then they sell it and you're like, well, what, you know. Yeah. Um, Nicole says, Nicole, Nicole uh, Gaspard, she says hi from California. She yeah. runs the um, Haunted Real Connection show on the Paranormal King on Wednesdays. Uh, Witchin says, uh, my girl Heather, Witchin Life Guide show every Thursday on Paranormal King. She says, great info, Jason. Great show. Thank you. Um, yeah. So that's good. We get some people. You're, so you're, and also too, Nicole says that I heard it's better. I might uh, remove mine and break it off the antenna. She's saying of her box. Yeah, I so mean, I even, people... I even did the shack hack where you go by the Radio Shack camera or uh, 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 radio and do it. And the first thing we did was pull the antenna off after we got it changed to be able to sweep. And that's the device we caught all that stuff on. So, yeah, it's worth oh, it. Oh wow. That is cool. Yeah, that's that, and that's what people need to do. Like you say, you're, you're in it. Like I can't mention enough. You're in it for for the right reasons. Uh, we got about five six minutes left. Why don't you go ahead and plug some shit? Plug plug anything you want. Plug your TikTok. I don't care, dude. You got a YouTube, right? Uh, talk uh, about Ghost Guy. People can find Ghost Guy on Facebook. Yeah, Ghost Guy, and I think they've put it in chat a few times, but uh, I don't even know my my handle anymore. I used to. <laughs> People took <laughs> people took care of it. Um, I shared the shit out of it. I invited all my friends. Yeah. We got you in the group. You know, we respect the hell out of you. Um, and of course, Bartersville's uh, you, you're a little quiet right now. Of course, with COVID and, and winter and such. But yeah, any plans this year with them at all? The summer, you think? Um, I plan on getting out and doing some things this summer. Just not sure in what capacity. I if I can find a place to uh. To do my experiments and stuff, I will have evidence and and my hypothesis and all that stuff written up and posted on that page, the Bartlesville uh, Ghost Research Team page. Um, Check it out. On if Facebook I actually, page. yeah, and if I actually go out and do hunts or anything as a as a like a ghost, what you consider a ghost hunt, I'll I'll post post that kind of thing on my Ghost Guy page. But I I don't like to. You won't see a whole lot of evidence or anything on my page is because there's just not as much out there as what people think. So, yeah, I might just post some smart ass things on my page every once in a while and just just enjoy the, the, the I, humor in it all. <laughs> how dare you make people think? Don't make people think outside the box, Jason. How dare you get back in your cell at good money? Yeah. So, okay, so, right. <laughs> yep. Nicole, Nicole asked real quick because she joined us kind of late. Hi, Nicole. She goes, is it true? Some spirits. Do you believe? Um, that some spirits don't like some people on earth. I mean, well, you think about it. I mean, there's mean people in life. Those same mean people in life are going to be mean after, after they die. Um, there, there's people that, that like you. There's people that don't like you alive and they probably won't like you when they're dead. It's right. It's honestly, I feel like if, if it was, if it's my consciousness, that's leaving my body, I mean, scientists have proven that consciousness can't exist outside of the body. They say they've proven it. I haven't seen proof proof, but if consciousness can live outside of the body, I know the people that I hate, I'm still going to hate when I'm, when I'm a ghost. Well, right. That's still, that's still somewhat connected to your brain or your knowledge yeah. of what you think, what you like and don't like. Right. So it's you. Yeah. It's what's making you, you. It's, it's your spark. Mm -hmm. It's your, your thing. And I mean, honestly, uh, my, I had a theory, and I don't have enough time to really explain it, but think about the spirit world as more of a, the force in Star Wars. Think about it as when you die, you join the force. You join all that other energy. You give the Jedis more power. You think about it like that, and then you go to homes and you get evidence, and that same voice comes through at a different house or they start calling you by name at another house you get to think and maybe just maybe it's not just that house that's haunted maybe it's just the ghosts are following you because they're just everywhere they're not just in these places where people have died they're not just alone they know who you are they know about you it's it's a it's a Genuine force and psychics, I believe they have a little antenna they can grow off the top of their head and connect with that force. That's how they get, or mediums, that's how they get communication. So it's a theory. I've got to prove it though. But do you work close with one? Do you have one that's on your team or a close friend? I'm curious. No, no I, I, I was wanting to collaborate with some people. Um, but one of the ladies I, I wanted to collaborate with was uh, her name's Vanessa Hogel. 
she just moved to North Carolina, I believe it was, or with Virginia, maybe it was. I don't remember. Anyway, I'm bad. I'm a bad friend, but she li- lived here in Oklahoma, and she she's got a lot of a lot of high marks from people that that she's been spot on with a lot of her her readings and a lot of her stuff. And I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I could get get somebody to help me prove this. But since she moved off, I mean, we might be able to still still make something work. And I hadn't really talked to her about it. It was just thoughts in my head, but I would like to work with somebody and see if they could kind of help me determine whether it's just a gift that they have, or if it's literally something that they can extend their mind to get to where normal people like me probably couldn't, but I, I I'm, I'm going to be looking for somebody, but they'd have to be local. Cause I, I want to be able to watch. I need to be able to monitor and I need to get one of those cameras that can measure uh, like auras and stuff. So we can actually see what happens when they start doing it. Because to me, that's interesting. That's the stuff I need to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, shit. That was a quick hour. We'll have yeah. to have you back uh, in the future. And I got my vodcast on Saturdays on this visual and we'll have to go do that. I know you get some parties tonight. So, um, Jason Alexander, the ghost guy, the ghost and guy, um, the Bartsville, uh, research ghost research team. Thank you. Terry York in chat, Nicole, Mike Davis, the King, witch in nature. Um, of course, ghost guy, me, um, witch and Heather, George Cannon, Melissa Keene, Betsy Lou Brown, Ross, uh, paranormal King radio network. What a great show that fucking flew by. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'll, uh, go have the night, have some fun, be safe. Yeah. And uh, it was a pleasure, my brother. Um, hey, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. We'll talk to you. Have a good one. All right, brother. Take care. Bye bye now. Bye. Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknowns.